Holy Ghost for real. with my winos, okay? And we are abstaining from wine, from meat, from dairy, from demons, <laughs> from predators and everything that is not of God for 15 days, okay? And so if you want to get a piece of the action and it's not too late to go ahead and join our congregation over on TashaKLive.com to get in on this detox, it's only $12. We ain't charging $1,200. We ain't charging $120. We are charging $12 to purify your life, mind, body, spirit, and blood, okay, on Tasha TashaKLive.com. How are y'all doing tonight? Woo! Did y'all come from our uh, uh, gospel segment, okay? Did you not come, but did you come from the gospel segment? We don't need no more people coming on children. Listen. Mm, I know y'all have been wondering, a lot of y'all have been wondering, what is going on? Why is everyone up in arms on YouTube. Tasha, why? Why would you expose your friend, Dr. Larry Reed, live like this, okay? A lot of you are wondering that. But before I answer this question, as if you weren't in the pre-show, before I answer this question, I need you guys to like this video, okay? Or dislike it. We just need you to actively participate as much as you are participating here in the chat, okay? Moderators, remember no blocking. No matter how angry anybody gets, I don't block no one because everybody has a space to come before the Lord. Tonight! Okay? But before, like I said, I need those likes up, okay? I need those likes. Bigo is complaining that there's no sound on Bigo, okay? All right, so Bigo, I'm sorry. Um, you may have to come on over here. All right, listen, 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 listen. All right, so I want to fill y'all in because I know some of y'all did come from uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, or even our second channel, Winos Podcast. If you did, I just have to do a brief, brief uh, intro for those that didn't catch our intro, okay? And, um, the Holy Ghost, because I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost, really. I ain't caught the Holy Ghost in so long. I ain't caught it in so long that I'm about to call my father and let him know that I'll be through to the church here in the next couple of weeks, okay? My father, my uncles, all of them are ministers, all right? I am not wearing white and blue by mistake. I wanted to make sure that everything that I do tonight is done in purity. Now, y'all are asking why? Why, why would you, Tasha K, expose your friend, someone that you ate with, had phone calls with, had around your children? Lord, you just don't understand how much that scares me. My heart beating fast right now just thinking about it. That I got a son that was in the presence of, of an alleged predator. And I ask you, because that's a very good question, what type of friend would I be if I didn't expose him? Like, what type of friend would I be to know these things to accept these things and sweep them under the church rug as elders have been doing 
for years. Is that what you call friendship? No, no, no. Explain to me what friendship is. Please, somebody. Before we play this very disturbing, very detailed, very graphic account, uh, just, just account of 15-year-old Levantre Andrews, who Dr. Larry Reed Live has acknowledged in, in, in court paperwork that has since been dismissed by Larry. That has since been dismissed because he uses, he uses the law and the church law to bully, intimidate, and in my opinion, pray on people who are financially weak, spiritually weak, mentally weak, vulnerable, and underage weak. Okay? Said in this lawsuit that upon information and belief, Mr. Reed is the sole member of LRR, okay? And not only that, he earns a good living creating gossip content about churches on social media. He gossips about everybody's church but his own. But how, how, how is it that you out here exposing every church? Every church but your own. Where in the hell do they do that at? As they say. Hmm? 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 How is it that you've been out here since 2017 on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, and you have coincidentally even partnered with me to expose churches, but you somehow left your church out of the expose? Huh, friend? Ha huh, friend, since y'all seem to think YouTubers, YouTubes are, are friendships. I just, I, I'm just appalled at how loosely y'all use the word friend these days. Okay? Levantre, hold on, hold on, oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Who I have here a 13-page lawsuit. Who writes a 13-page lawsuit against someone who's accusing you of the most heinous crime in the world? Dr. Larry Reed, don't you look away from me. You, it's your turn now, brother. It's your turn now, brother. You've been out here on every church's block. You've been talking about everybody, daddy, mama, children. Okay? But you're going to look away from me right now, brother? No, 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 no. You're going to face me today. Uh -huh. it, the introduction of this lawsuit that Larry filed against uh, the accuser, Levantre Andrews, that has since been dismissed by Dr. Larry Reed live as well after one month. After one month of filing. He says that he's an ordained minister, author, songwriter, go songwriter, gospel, recording artist, and actor. Reed is well known as an online commentator who discusses matters involving pop culture, politics, and religious leaders in their movements. Not allegedly. He wrote this. Okay. Also goes on to say that Larry Reed Live LLC, sponsored by the NBN Network, which is a 501c3 compliant ministry, I beg to differ, but that's a whole nother topic there, okay? LRL, LRL airs to a combined audience of nearly 400,000 people weekly on Facebook and YouTube. I should have been streaming live on YouTube, uh, Facebook tonight because we have to reach all. We have to make sure, okay? With over 32 million views on YouTube alone, YouTube and LLR are referred to collectively as plaintiffs. This is the frivolous lawsuit he filed and dismissed less than three weeks after it was filed against the accuser that is here with us tonight with receipts. 
says that the defendant, Levantre Andrews, is angry with Reed for unrelated matters. Unrelated matters. How do you file a lawsuit and you say that the defendant, Levantre Adams, who was 15 years old at the time that he's alleging these things, was angry with Reed for unrelated matters and you filed a lawsuit, but you don't put what the unrelated matters are, sir? What are the unrelated ad, uh, 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 matters? And to any other YouTuber that wants these court documents, please email us. We will gladly send you the file, and you can review them as much as you want. You break it down. You dissect it. You figure out what this, uh, uh, this language is because I'm having a hard time because if, in fact, the defendant was angry, which he, in, it, according to the story that y'all are going to hear tonight, he was well within his right. Because he was, he was violated at 15, according to him. He has every right to be angry. But what I'm angry about is that you had the audacity to use the money that was given to you as a 501c3 compliant ministry with a combined audience of 400000 to use the said money to bully and intimidate victims that have a leg to stand on. But you won't say, sir, after you said about every other pastor out here, every other religious organization, why they mad, why they cheating, why they got baby mamas, why they messing with children. But you have failed to list why uh, de defendant Levantre Andrews was angry with you because you knew motherfucking well why. Yeah. Yeah. Has knowingly disseminated false allegations on least Two social media platforms alleging that he was <sighs> touched by Reed almost 20 years ago during the time Reed was a pastor in North Carolina. The purpose of this smear campaign is to cause humiliation, embarrassment, and to tarnish the reputation of Reed and the LRRLRRR brand. But you still ain't saying what the defendant was angry about. What are those unrelated matters? And to, like I said, the YouTube bloggers that want these, Chelsea is on standby. Ready to email. You ready to email, Chelsea? Chelsea's ready to email. Okay? You guys have full. Reed is an individual that, that resides in Fulton County. Okay? And he is seeking, in the amount of the controversy, exceeds 75000 which means he was trying to take, not only did he, uh, according to Levantre Adams, take something that was precious, which was his dignity and his integrity. You want to take money from him like you took from Daryl Moore, the blogger, the blogger behind everything. He is the reason why I'm able to do this now. Shout out to Daryl Moore, the cigar vlogger. Okay, I wouldn't even be able to 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 do this if it wasn't for Daryl Moore. He planted the seed. I'm watering it, and in spring we shall watch it grow. After we put out this series Sunday after Sunday, since you want to get in the pulpit and preach on Sundays, we're gonna preach our own gospel on Sundays, and it's P P P. Say it in the chat, Pastor, Prophet, or what? What is it? I don't see enough likes on this video before Levantre Andrews come on because it takes courage for a heterosexual black man to come on a platform as big as ours to air out things that grown men take to their grave. I don't see enough likes for that. Okay? I don't see enough likes for that. And a lot of y'all are mad at Daryl stalking. What reason would Daryl have to stalk? Rosea face, discolored, eyebrows arched higher than the gods. Larry Reed. Why would Daryl Moore want to stalk Larry? So you have to ask yourself, what is the why? What is the intent? This man ain't got no pictures of this man stalking him. He ain't filed no harassment paperwork on this man. He ain't getting no trespassing paperwork on Daryl Moore. Where is the paperwork? When somebody is stalking you, like how the Kobe Bryant daughters was stalked, there's paperwork filed. There's trespassing orders filed. There was nothing filed. But y'all just take his word because he has said, not God, but he has said that he is spiritually ordained. 
And you just say, he just, he just says what he wants and y'all believe it. But you don't even ask yourself, what are these unrelated allegations? And why is this boy angry? And why would Daryl Moore, a grown man, a father, a business owner, why would he want to stalk Larry Reed? And he has four victims that are alleging the most hideous, the most heinous crimes against humanity. Why would he want to stalk him? Does he, do you feel Daryl Moore want a piece? Do you feel like he wants to tell the same story that these alleged victims are telling about uh, 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 low T-cell counts and, uh, you know, coming in people's mouth? Do you feel that's what Daryl Moore was looking for? Yeah, do you? F Come on now, we're not finna play no games tonight. Because you're trying to justify your donations to a demon. And you forgot, as a grown, as a grown adult, to ask yourself why. Don't bring that over here. Don't you bring that over here. Come on now. Don't you bring that over here tonight. We are going to stop with that. That stops tonight. Why would a grown man who lives across state lines want to stalk him and he got one, two, three, four boys who are alleging the most heinous crimes? And this man is out here preaching about every other church and their shortcomings, but forgot to put his own church on the screen. Don't play with me tonight. Don't play with me tonight because you're trying to justify your donations and your support because you are no different than him turning away as he's doing in this picture. And he's using the very money that you donate to bully, to harass, to threaten these boys. Do not play with me tonight. I'm a friend, remember? How could I be biased? I'm his friend. He ate in my, I ate in his house. I used his cake baker. I used his chef. And his chef told me in the kitchen, after this man looked me in my face and told me there was only a, a vlogger, Daryl Moore, that was stalking and harassing him, but there were no victims. And then the chef said to me, I don't know why these boys would say that. I didn't notice nothing in the house. Well, sis, you didn't notice anything because you were cooking and eating cooch. How could you and your face is buried between the legs of other women in the house? That's why your teeth are rotten and falling out to Larry's chef. Do, do you really, you, we're not playing. We're not playing tonight. Okay, we have been working on this for three months, three months, and I would not touch it unless there was a receipt so heavy, so heavy, it was undisputable that I could just sleep well at night. And I've been sleeping and watching how he's moving. I even called him. I even called Larry and gave him warning like, hey, is there anything that exists between you and these victims of you apologizing? He said, no. They probably took my words and chopped them on my platform. Absolutely not. Our viewers heard that call on TashaKLive.com. That's how heavy it is. That's how sticky it gets. Okay? That's how sticky it gets. I don't see enough likes for this. We are liberating children tonight. I don't see enough likes. Okay? Okay? I don't see enough likes. We got children out here with low T cell counts, according to them. And their dignity and manhood has been stripped because they've been manipulated through tests. Tests. Everything but an HIV test.
And to every member that donate, listen, listen, I ain't here to convince you. I'm just telling you, you ain't coming over here with that damn mess. So you can continue to support, donate, do whatever it is you want to do. Pay for the medical bills. Whatever it is that he got going on, you pay for that. You use your money for that. I am not here to tell you what you use your God-earned heart on money to tithe with. And when you're on the prayer calls in the morning and he's asking for that 666, you donate $6.66 and $666 or $666, you, you just remember what that 666 really stands for when you're on them prayer calls in the morning on Patreon. You do that. Come on now. Come on now. I'm not alleging anything. This is, these are the victim's words. These ain't my words. These are the victim's words. And, and it's hard to believe that these men, why would they want to come out and just lie like this? You just got to understand. And then he don't even want to tell what they're angry about. Why? And if they, if they are angry, would they not be in their right mind? Let me keep it. Hold on for a second. Hold on. In 2007, Larry says, who was, se uh, who was 17 at the time, his mother him and his mother needed a place to live. This is the court document. This is what Larry is saying. And the family moved from their home in Rayford, North Carolina, to Raleigh, North Carolina, to live with, with Bryant. So he put this on his cousin. Said they didn't live with him, the cake baker. They, uh, uh, Larry Reed, they lived with the cake baker and his wife, whose teeth is rotten, from probably eating his cakes and eating too much cooch. And she, she didn't see nothing because she big and was buried between legs of women, but was married to a man. The cake baker. This is everybody in, in, in Larry's circle. Okay, and as a part of the ministry, Bryant routine, routinely allowed displaced families and their children to stay with him and his family until they got back on their feet. So he put it all on Shamako. The man's name is Shamako. The bald head guy that's always with Larry. He makes sure everybody keep a bald head now. Easier to wipe off when there's residue and stuff that's being being spit out and stuff, you know, mm. or just. And continue, he said that uh, 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 Levantre Andrews was seven, se 17 at a time, and he displayed troublesome and unruly behavior. In 2008, the defendant, who was unable to maintain a steady residence, requested and was allowed to move into the home owned by Reed. So you acknowledge, after you said that there was no home in the police report that Levantre Andrews filed right after he confronted you about doing this to him. But you failed to mention that. You've told your viewers over and over, you've told the internet that it was, how could I do something? And it was a dwelling there. It wasn't even a house. How could I do? It was a dwelling. Now you're, you're alleging. See, this is how you don't remember your lies, sir. But when I do my breakdown of it, oh, when it's all out and I put the, the timeline together, I've already downloaded all the videos and the statements. So you can't go back and delete videos now because you talk too much. And I let you do that for three months while we were out in North Carolina interviewing and still interviewing to this day. Okay. So listen. You said he was unable to maintain a steady residence requested and was allowed to move into a, a home owned by you. And he filed a police report about that home he was allegedly violated in. This is the lawsuit Larry Reed filed against Levantre Adams that he, he, in order to address pending jurisdictional issues, plaintiffs Larry D. Reed and Larry Reed Live LLC acting through counsel and pursuant to federal rule of civil procedure hereby dismiss this action without prejudice and leave the refile. When is the refile? When is the refile? Because this boy been out here on the streets since 2017, been trying to get justice, but you've been trying to abuse him using these 13 pages and lawyers that you got. Let me keep going on because the interview is going to come up here shortly, but I just want you to know what was said from him. So when you go and you listen, I want you to listen. Listen with your heart. Matter of fact, listen with your wallet. When you start listening with your wallet, let me tell you something. When you start listening with your wallet, which means, you know, somebody trying to tell, come tell, sell you something, and you know they want money, but you real skeptical, and you use discernment. Tell me how many of y'all do that. I do that. Don't you do that, Chelsea? You listen more. So listen with your wallet the next time he tells you whatever he wants to tell you about these, these victims, him and his boyfriend that he tricks on and buys cars and computers for with your donations uh, as a 501c3 compliant member. Do not play with me tonight, okay? Do not play with me tonight. 
Should have bought him more wigs. Should have bought the boyfriend more wigs. Instead, he got to wash out that same wig and clip it in and hold it to the side. And shake it out and dry it out for every episode that he gets on live to lie to y'all about on behalf of his financier and trick daddy, Larry Reed Live. I told you this was God's moment tonight. I, I, don't, I don't even know how I'm doing this. I cannot do this on my own. This is not me. Huh. Because Larry just got a whole lot of pretentiousness in this lawsuit, talking about how many viewers, how much money he makes, also advertisements and subscribers. The same thing he tells y'all about when he's talking about his diamonds and, and millions of dollars and, and reality shows with BET and, you know, Yolanda Adams. That's why we play Yolanda tonight, because, you know, that's a language we all understand. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Before we get to, so he said on his YouTube channel, more Daryl Moore, the cigar cigar vlogger that y'all claim um, was stalking Larry, um, revealed a 2018 police report cover from Raleigh, North Carolina. The police report does not bear Reed's name, but shows the OLC drive home street address and reflects an allegation of forcible fondling. You're going to hear about forcibly forcibly fondling tonight from Levantre Adams telling a story about him at 15 years old, okay? And Moore invited the defendant onto his YouTube channel where the defendant claimed that he filed the police report. So um, an alleged, we're talking about Daryl Moore and Levantre Adams, okay? Because Daryl Moore was the first to give Levantre Andrews, I said Adams, Andrews a voice. I'm the second, he's the first. A legend that he reported that he was touched at the age of 14, Reed was never contacted, no charges were ever brought, and there is currently no active investigation into this claim by the Riley Police Department. How do you know that and there's a police report, sir? How do you say that there's a police report, but you say there's no active uh, investigation? How do you know that? After an interview on Moore's platform on April 20th, 2021, so let me tell you, this is how far back these allegations go. Reed sent the cease and desist letter to the defendant through his counsel. As a result, he didn't send a cease and desist letter to Levantre Andrews. He sent the 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 fifteen the, the grown man who was telling a story about his 15-year-old experience with him. He sent a cease and desist letter to the vlogger. So if I could scare the vlogger, the victims will stand down. Never once. There's other ones that are claiming low T-cell counts and stuff, but this is the first lawsuit and the and the first to be filed and dismissed by Larry Reed himself. This is, a, a, and it happened as of uh, uh, December, November last year. So you mean to tell me they've been out here on, on your account since 2021, and this is the first lawsuit that you've ever filed about these allegations, and you dismissed it for the first time ever because it was the only one you filed all within a month's period. Do not play with me. As a result of the cease and desist letter, it appeared that in refrain that reading false uh, uh, child-touching uh, child rumors until his most recent alliance with Bishop Lamar Whitehead. What does Lamar Whitehead got to do with you and these boys? These boys tell them about a story that happened to them when they were living in your house that you said was your house. Okay? You done brought somebody else in here. In that case, you should have added Bishop Lamar Whitehead to the lawsuit, but you didn't. You didn't, okay? Um, hold on for a second. All this is about Whitehead. What does this have to do with? And Whitehead is not on this lawsuit. Like, what? What? What are we doing? Same thing you was lying about on your channel. Whitehead, Whitehead, Whitehead. Somebody try to take me down, take me down. They, they, these boys was here before Whitehead even entered the picture. What does Whitehead have to do with this? And these boys were here before Whitehead, the bling bling pastor, showed up on the scene. He, he, and trust me, nobody will miss him. He's shining. He blinging. He said his diamonds ain't cloudy, but yours are. Come on now. Come on now. It, nothing about, the only thing is only one page about Levantre Andrews that he filed this lawsuit about. But the, the other 12 pages are all about Whitehead. And nothing uh, uh, explaining angry with Reed for unrelated matters. Nothing. And if you lie and say that he didn't respond to your lawsuit because you said that you couldn't serve him, 
That's a lie. Levantre Andrews was served. He accepted. He filed a motion that was longer than your lawsuit. Your lawsuit was 13 pages. This motion uh, in response to your lawsuit is 26 pages. I don't want to go through it because it's so much because I'm going to let you just hear his story tonight, okay? So don't you ever open your mouth, your nasty ass, sticky mouth, okay, to ever say that this man did not respond to you in this lawsuit. And then once he responded with 26 pages, you went and, and filed a motion to dismiss and said it was for jurisdictional reasons. He was ready to go. But you backed out, you and your 12 pages, because you knew that you would have to open up medical reports. You would have to, you would have to give over phones. This is how I know you got to give over phones and computers, because even in my, my lawsuit with my sister-in-law, they had a whole forensic team that came into my house, right? And they extracted every document on my computer and my phone. That's not what you wanted. That's not what you wanted, brother. You, you wasn't on that type of time because they could have used that for taxes and stuff like that. Everybody could. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That's not what you wanted. Okay? That's not what you wanted tonight. But like I said, Chelsea is on standby. Unwind with Tasha K. Do you have access to the unwind with Tasha K at gmail.com? Uh, email Chelsea. So you guys can email uh, unwind with Tasha K at gmail.com and she will give you both. Uh, the response to the 12 page lawsuit and count the pages yourself when you when you print them YouTube bloggers if I didn't have faith in y'all wouldn't give them to you because I know y'all know y'all y'all get any y'all get sticky with it the same way he like it sticky in his mouth y'all get sticky y'all get sticky with it okay so after after this said interview so listen this ain't got nothing to do with me and Larry's friendship because like I said I'm holding up my end of the bargain and I'm being a friend I'm being a friend because what type of friend would not um, free a friend you're in bondage you're in bondage okay you're in bondage listen I don't see enough likes I don't see enough likes and support for Levantre Andrews. I am not asking y'all for no money. I am asking y'all merely to hit that like button. When I see enough likes, we will roll this interview. Otherwise, guess what? Everybody that's on TashaKLive.com, they got a full two and a half hours, and they're getting almost 10 hours of footage from different victims and accounts and things like that, okay? Helping them to save their sons and their sons' sons from possible alleged predators like this that need facials, that need to probably go check the blood, figure out why he having muscle spasms and he got his personal assistant flying everywhere with him just to give him massages because apparently, according to uh, Levantre Andrews, he loves massages. He loves to give them and he loves to take them, okay? Yes, 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 okay? So listen, um, while we're, uh, giving, uh, uh, thanks to our sponsors. Okay. I expect around 4,000 likes. Okay. Before I run this interview with Levantre Andrews, like I said, we spent months putting this together. Okay. And I have 45 minutes of a two and a half hour, hour interview with him. 45 minutes of YouTube approved content so that there is no distraction on this content, meaning no age restriction, no nothing like that. You guys get Levantre Andrews and the meat and potatoes. If you do want the extended version, it is alive and well and going heavy on TashaKLive.com for all of $12 a month. You get that and you get a detox along with Yaki Awakened as well. Okay, we got some sponsors that we need to brag about, which means boldly raise our T2. Let's go. Yaki, okay? You are a master healer, a spiritual healer. Um, you deal in the metaphysics. You are a biochemist. Wow. You're technically like a naturopathic doctor. And I'm a certified biochemist. I've been doing that for like the last 10 years. So I heal myself of diabetes. I heal myself of scar tissue in my heart, heart disease, toenail fungus, all of these things. So if you go to the doctor right now, your blood work, and you go get a CBC chart, and they check your white blood cells, they check your chloroplast, your neutrophils, your basal 
basal fields, your mono fields, your, your, your red blood cells, your hemoglobin. The statistics that they're going to check it by is based off of the blood analysis of a 40 year old Caucasian man. How, how is that possible? So when you actually check the, the, the vaginal bacteria of a black woman and you check the vaginal bacteria of a Caucasian woman or an Asian woman, the diversity of microbes inside of the black woman's vagina is crazy. Our penises is shrinking every year centimeters center all the way up to two inches so babies are now coming out with just small penises and we don't know why and the doctors are telling the patients what the pharmaceutical companies want us to do yeah but so my question would be this when when is money gonna stop being the the mediator between us telling our people lies and miseducation to our people everything they ever have told us is a lie they tell us that our heart is a pump your heart is not a pump your heart is a valve your lungs is a pump that pumps the blood to the heart the heart is a valve mechanism that controls the cardio output of blood everything they tell us about everything is a lie they tell you your hair is just hair no our hair is nine ether hair it is actually extension of your nervous system it is used to scan the environment and it brings all of these different melanin neurotransmitters back back to your skin to tell you whether to actually engage in the environment or take fight or flight and run away. Uh, we heal a lot of uh, what you would call celebrities or stars, a whole lot of them. My name ring bells in the, the celebrity kingdom. I know. Ring bells. We didn't heal cancer. <laughs> we didn't heal a lot of STDs with rappers, a whole lot of it's crazy STDs. We didn't got people off of opioids. Uh, we didn't heal, we grew a thyroid back. Mm -hmm. We got rid of a case of HIV in the actual celebrity community mm -hmm. it's crazy the way they call me and it's like you got everything you want but you missing your health and the way they call me in distress is just like that money you got don't mean nothing right now and i start asking i said that money how did that feel and they be telling me like i feel like i'm incapable i feel like i ain't i got all this money and i can't buy i can't buy help reverse <laughs> Y'all remember that damn song, don't y'all laugh at me? Why knows, but for real, listen close and listen carefully. The olive leaf extract can reverse high blood pressure and diabetic high blood sugar, or the sugar, as some of our grandmamas may call it. It can also kill any nasty little bugs in your bodies like parasites, bacteria, fungi, tumors, and much, much more. And if that's not enough, you can also tell certain cancers like breast, prostate, colon, liver, and skin cancer to take a seat because the olive leaf extract has been known to fight it. And their friend Lupus can get it too, okay? So I need my winos to be in good health because we have some good dragging to do. So visit myoliveleaf.biz to help get your health in order. All right, winos, check out our Unwind with Tasha K store. We got sweatshirts that say, now nah, I gotta go and I ain't got it. We got crop top wine mug, water bottles. We got it all, okay? So be sure to hit that link below. All right, and we're back. We ain't, we ain't forgot yet. Okay, you've been out here bullying and intimidating and stuff like that. So now it's time for us to, you know, just, you know, return it just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, so listen, um, I don't see 4,000 likes. I don't see them, okay? I don't, I don't even need them to be likes. I need them to be dislikes or something. I just need you to engage, okay? I will run this commercial again. I'm going to give you all one minute. I will run the commercials again. And what Yaki had to say, because we got that full interview with Yaki Awaken, because we're doing, like I said, for the next 15 days on TashaKLive.com, we are cleansing, we are detoxing, we are purifying, we are telling the truth, we are being great friends, okay? We are being there for one another. Everybody posting their detoxes. We got a whole plan together. I've led it up. Chelsea designed the, the planner and all that stuff. People losing weight, they shitting, okay? They are abstaining from people coming in their mouth. Are you, sir? Are you? And so before we we roll this interview, come on now, 600 more likes, 600 more likes. Before we roll this interview with Levantre Adams, the story of 15-year-old Levantre Adams, okay, and how the church failed him, used him, manipulated him, and failed him. He is the first of, like I said, many victims that are alleging these same things. He is the first. He is the seed. Okay? He is the seed. He is the seed that brought me and Larry, Dr. Larry uh, D. Reed's uh, friendship closer. He is the reason why we are best friends right now. Because it takes a friend. It takes a friend to do this. When you know somebody, 
you think you're well equipped for it. It's just like my mama knowing me or my daddy. They the best. They the best to do it. To do the job. Come on now, four hundred more likes. To do the job. I am a great friend. This is what friendship looks like. So to any friends that I have out there, if I find out that you are hiding something as such, I'm gonna be a friend and I'm gonna tell everybody about it. Ask my team. They'll tell you. Are there any secrets in here, <laughs> Chelsea, Jasmine, Shaq? Are there any secrets in here? No, we don't we don't operate in secrecy. Our team is not even are y'all on NDAs? Nobody's on an NDA. Why? Because everything is open. We believe in being pure self here. We believe in being pure self. And so listen, without further ado, without further ado, a famous, because he famous. BET, Yolanda Adams, Nene Leaks. You famous. This is what famous look like. When you famous, this is what it look like. Welcome to fame. <laughs> Everything that you pray to God and the devil about, welcome to fame. Okay? Oh, real quick, real quick before we run this interview. Bego, for those of y'all that subscribe using my link in the description box uh, to Bego Live tonight, uh, we are giving free prizes out. Okay? We are giving free prizes out. So you make sure you use that link and you subscribe to our Bego on Bego, okay? So you make sure the link is below in the description box. You don't use that link, you don't qualify, okay? 9,000. See how the, see how God works? I can't dress for the Lord today. First, I'm coming to take, look, first lady. <laughs> first lady, okay? So without further ado, I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your underbodied attention. I appreciate you allowing God to speak tonight using this young man because I really believe that unfortunately when some things like this happen and they come and they happen the way that they happen to him, that you know, all, all, we will all be used if we have the courage enough to allow God to lead us, okay? Because you don't find heterosexual men that are out here telling these stories like this. They take it to their grave or they take it and they do other things. Because I'm going to be honest with you, Larry's lucky that he's here. Larry lucky that he's still here. He is because you just don't know how, how people will respond to stuff like this. You just don't know. You ain't met the right person yet, brother. You, I believe God has spared you for this moment because it could have, it could have went a different way. It could have went a different way for you. Had it would have been my child, I would have been like this. Click, clang. See you on the other side, brother. Well, I may pass you going through the gate. So, without further ado, a famous pastor accused of paying teenage boys to come in his mouth. Dr. Larry Reed Live, you are the first installment of our PPP, Pastor, Prophet, or Pedo. This is your question to answer, viewers. Roll that footage. All of us have gone through things that... Um, you know, that were very hard for us, that were very difficult, that were very challenging, but it doesn't make us who we are as a person. And so I just, I just, you know, want to have a conversation with you about who you are. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so I just want to start, like, where are you originally from? So I'm originally from uh, Rayford, North Carolina. Rayford? Rayford, North Carolina. I haven't even heard of that. Yeah. So Rayford is, um, it's right outside of Raleigh. I'm sorry, right outside of Fayetteville. Okay. Right outside of Fayetteville. Uh, that's where I grew up most of my life. All right. And then later, uh, I was, what, 15, somewhere in there, I moved to Raleigh. Okay. You know, but um, yeah, Rayford is where I'm from, uh, Hope County, Buck, Bucks. You know so it's a small, so, small town. Very small town. Okay. Very small town. Okay. Yeah, Redneckish yeah. or all black? No, no, no. We in there. Yeah, it ain't no white. It's it's the white people. Well, it's us. You know. It's okay. Us. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's cool, not a cool, not a red cool. town at all. Okay. Not at all. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Good old Hope County. Wow. Yeah, that's where I'm from. Mom and dad. Yeah. Mom and dad. Yeah, both are from okay. Hope County. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Siblings. I do have an older brother. Okay. Older brother. Um, 
He's doing well. Okay. <laughs> he's doing well. But yeah, he's uh, he, he's doing well. Really so you the baby. baby. I'm the baby. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, mom and dad. Uh, uh, you guys both have the same mom and dad. You and your brother. No, my brother has a different dad. Okay. Different dad. Um, he was in the house with my dad. Um, up until they got divorced when I was nine. My brother's okay. four years older than me. Okay. But he was with them. Um, what three? Or maybe like three or four years before I was born together in the, in the house with them together okay and uh they divorced and you know that's the way that went so. so do you know your stepdad as dad no oh yeah i know him as a good guy okay um, i know him as uh my mom's husband and okay. um but not not dad though like my dad is in my life my, okay yeah so like but this is like my my mom's current husband mm-hmm. um they've been married like five six years okay yeah, so i met him as an adult so it's just kind of like weird to be like stepdad, you know. But okay. he's a good guy though. He's not, okay. you know. Oh, my mom, so. she on her third marriage, so I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just call him by their first name at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I got too many daddies going down yeah. the list. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know how it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, tell us about your childhood growing up with mom and dad, and what okay. was that like? Um, well, they were married uh, 13 years before they got divorced. You and your mom and your your dad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were married 13 years. Um, it was dope, you know, um, being in the house with my, my mom, my dad. Um, I loved it. You know, okay. I loved it. Um, they seemed to love each other. Um, a lot of what my mom was in that relationship, it, it kind of taught me how to look for a wife. You know, yeah, mom was a really, really good wife. Okay. Really, really good wife. And uh, he knows that, you know, and still knows that, you know, to this day. Okay. So uh, just didn't work out. You know, life happens. You yeah. Know? So, um, but yeah, it was, I was there. Um being me, being a kid, I loved sports growing up, loved music. Okay. Still in music now. Um, my mom is actually the reason why I started playing in the beginning. Okay. You know, um, what wrote, instrument do you play? Uh, drums. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you was the one on the bleachers. Yeah. That was yeah, you? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Beating on the bleachers, beating on the lunchroom table. It's like, I was that dude. I always yeah, loved yeah, being around the, yeah. the, the drummers. I'm like, hit a beat for me. Yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was that guy. I okay. Was that guy. Yeah, always okay. hitting on something, even at home beating on pots and you know so. yeah so my, but my mom when she saw i had like this interest in drums we were at this a small church at the time okay <clears throat> and my mom was ushering and uh she i remember coming the drummer that particular sunday didn't show up i had never played a day of my life okay and she came up to me she said um said, i'm gonna let you play these drums I said if you mess up i'm gonna make you get off right <laughs> and now i'm like oh my god so i'm, I'm stoked and from that yeah. day so now I've been playing. So. You had messed up. Nah, I didn't mess up. Wow. Thankfully. Yeah, yeah. So now. And you yeah. got a whole career. Yeah. You're yeah. traveling. I travel. Yeah. Maybe to do what I do for a living. What ta- okay. So give me a, do you travel with like major artists and stuff? Every situation is different. So I have, um, okay. my, my current situation, it's not like a major artist, but mm-hmm. it's, it's a, it's an established organization okay. um, that's been established since like 04. And uh, they've, they've done world, world tours at this point, you know, in and out of the country. So Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All yeah. right. Cool. So, <clears throat> you know, mom puts the drums in your hand. Mm-hmm. How was, like, elementary school for you and stuff? Elementary school? Hmm. I was me, just on a smaller scale, you know. Um, yeah. I've always thought I was just the coolest guy. And I, I got that from my dad. You know, my okay. dad was... Um, my superhero, you okay. know, and, and the reason for it was just like, everybody liked my dad, you know, okay. so I'm like, I want to be that guy when I walk in the room. What he is when he walks in the room, I want to be that, you know, okay. and I, I just emulated that from a very young age, you know. Okay. Um, so you look like him? I do. Yeah, yeah, okay. I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I'm, uh, I'm darker, but I, I look like him. Oh, so he light skin or something? He's not light skin, but he ain't, he ain't dark skin. He like, he like in the middle. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, he's like in the middle, so. Okay. Um, but yeah, my dad was my hero and, uh, that was, I, like I said, in, in, in elementary school, I can remember flirting with the teachers and, you know, that kind of, yeah. as, 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 at that age, right? Yeah. And it was because of my dad, <laughs> you know, it was because of my dad. I just thought it was the cool thing yeah. to do, you know, okay. always, you know, complimenting and, you know, little stuff. So. Grades were good? They were decent. I think I was more distracted by that stuff. You know, they were, I, Women. I, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I was distracted by I want to be the cool guy. 
I okay. think I was distracted by that early. He had rhythm too. And you I like had drums. rhythm. Everybody liked the drum. Yeah, everybody liked the drum. You know, it came with the territory. Everybody yeah. liked the drum. So. But um, yeah. yeah, I was I was a regular kid though. Nothing crazy. Okay. Nothing crazy. Um, elementary school was, I think what we moved like twice maybe, and uh, yeah, went the crap play ball. You know, we got played for a rec league. Yeah. Um, but yeah, typical life as, okay. a, as a kid. Nothing. Nothing. What crazy. about high school? High school was a little different, and uh, we, we probably can get more into that I don't okay. know, later if you want to. But like, that. I guess entering into high school, middle school. Okay. Yeah. So um, entering into high school, um, still an athlete. Okay. Um, at, the, at that point, um, I was already playing drums and like making money for it. Okay. You know, at, at that point, so I was still really into music. Now, were you uh, part of a church? When you were playing drums when you were younger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and yeah. then you did side gigs as well, too. I did, I did. So it was, at that time, it was only gospel. So oh. I would play for, like, um, a gospel artist in my city and that kind of thing. Okay. But, um, yeah, I would play. I played for, let me see, one, two. Played for two churches consistently at one point. And it was like every now and then an artist in the city was like, I need a drummer, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. And I was just trying to like get my get my bearings kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, but um, yeah, music has always been a part of what I do. Okay. Yeah, in some way. So. So you've been, yeah. you know, of course, the church was a was a big part of, you know, who you are, mm -hmm. and somewhat of what we're here, why we're here today, mm -hmm. is because you had um, a, I, I can't even put it into words. Yeah. You know, because this is a space that's supposed to protect you. Right. You know, and you're supposed to go there and feel free and mm -hmm. and feel covered and not feel like. Did you ever let, let me let me switch it up just a little bit here. Mm -hmm. So you're in church. D before you you as a teenager met uh, Larry Reed and his organization, mm -hmm. did you ever doubt church? Did I doubt church? Um, Did you have a question? Faith? For sure. Really? For sure. I, I've um, I've questioned, like, is any of it real? Not just church. Okay. But I, I question, like, is this actually something that's that's real? Like, or and I've I've also had questions like, is this the right faith? Is this the right thing to believe? Yeah. Like, is what they're saying more correct? Is, you know, so I've had I had those kind of questions, um, just because of the kind of personality I, I had and have still. Like, okay. I'm like really uh, analytical in terms of just okay. how I view life, mm -hmm. and um, but more specific to the context, I didn't question the church before I met him, um, in terms of what I believed the church was. What I believe the church was didn't come into question until after I met him. So I can say that in context of what we're talking about now. But just generally speaking, like that was my personality to question. Yeah. Okay. I just kind of um, want to see how you <clears throat> felt about church before we get into that. So it was it was it was a healthy relationship. No, for sure, for sure. Because I I mean, everybody does question it because it's mm -hmm. like I'm supposed to look right, look well, don't mm -hmm. turn this cheek. You know, it's a lot of Structure. Yeah, it's it culture. Comes, yeah, it's culture. It's like culture. my mom, that's how we grew up, and and I saw, I saw my mom transition from clubbing to preaching. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I saw that transition, and so to, to see what I would have described as a as positive impact on her yeah. and the way that she lived her life, it made me like gave me like some evidence of like okay, what what whatever this thing is she's believing that we're going to every Sunday. Like it works, you know, okay. to an extent, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And so that was really like the, my mom was really the the healthiest reference for me as a kid. Like when my, the way my mom lived her life as a Christian, yeah, like she really believed it. And okay. her faith made me believe, I'm like, okay, well, my mom is really disciplined to this. I can see that it seems to make her a better person. So okay. why not? You know? Any childhood mm. traumas? Uh, outside of... Yeah, we ain't all Okay, 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 mm. okay. Um, <laughs> but any childhood traumas, like, were you ever in trouble? Were you, like, going to jail or juvenile? 
you know, hanging with the wrong crowd, fighting. So when my mom and my dad divorced, I went on this, it kind of put me in a space toward men in general. Okay. Um, Like I said, my dad, he went from being my hero, the guy I wanted, that I emulated every day. Like I'm taking his clothes and putting them on just so so I can have my dad's clothes on for the day, like Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, He went from being that to being absent, you know? Yeah. And it it gave me like this uh, perspective about men and for a while, I was just trying to find myself. And so, like, in that space, like, it made me angry, for one. I was okay. extremely angry for a while. And in that space, it did make me feel like, well, if he can't love me, then the streets can love me. Okay. I did have that thought. Um, I joined the game at the time. Um, I didn't. I, I never, before I'll say this, uh, as a kid, I was never arrested. Okay. Um, never any legal trouble at all. Okay. Um, I think I've been in situations just because of like the people I was around, mm-hmm. but I, I myself wasn't doing anything that would put me in a situation. Um, with the exception of just being there, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so that happened, um, a few times, like being around just the wrong people at the time at parties and that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. now people shooting, you know, that kind of thing. Like, so, but nothing to where I'm like, I'm, I'm not out here robbing nobody and all this. Like, I, w- I was never that guy. I was never the gangster. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you wanted to be no, that I wanted to be. I really wanted to be. Because I'm like, if I'm the gangster, yeah. then all of what I'm feeling, it ain't going to bother me. Because okay. I'm a gangster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's not going to I want to be the thug. I want to be, but I was too, like, I'm, I'm me. How like, old were you at the time? At the time, um, I was probably, what, maybe, it was it was after 12. Okay. After 12, before 15. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, that's usually the rebellious stage for a boy, too. Yeah. You're going through puberty and stuff, so. Yeah. And then your parents divorce. They divorce. So, yeah. that's, that's, it's totally normal, especially mm-hmm. when you're used to a family dynamic and then that is disrupted, so you go off mm-hmm. looking yeah. for other versions of a of a family. That's what. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Like, um, my mom was amazing, but she wasn't dad though, you yeah. know. And so because of that, it made me feel like I had to be my own dad, especially like you when you have a son. So I mean, uh-huh. you may have felt this at some point, but when when a a mom probably always knows this, I would assume. When a when a teenage kid becomes sexually active, not kid, teenage boy specifically, mm-hmm. becomes sexually active, it changes something about our makeup. Like now we feel like we grown. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. we grown now. Mm-hmm. Like I I've had sex with a woman. Like I'm grown now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, like after my dad left, and then I became sexually active. Yeah. You can't tell me nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you, what you gonna tell me? You know? You ain't got so, no job. But no you... job. No, right? And so I'm thinking, I'm like the yeah. guy now. And it just kind of transitioned into, okay, well, I'm, I'm a man this way. I gotta be a man this way. And I gotta be my own dad, too, right. because dad ain't here, you know? And so that's kind of what it turned into. So I'm yeah. just trying to figure myself out, but. I never was that guy. I, I was yeah. never a gangster. I, I wasn't. You know, I was. I was really soft for real. For real. Like if I keep it all the way hundred, I was like. I, I was just turned. I used to say I was a pop tart. I had. A, I had. A, I had a, this hard shell. Yeah. But like anything would hurt my feelings. But you wouldn't know it though, because I'm like you know. But see, I turned into this like real gooey dude on this side, but outside you would be like. If you ain't really trained, yeah. you'd be like, this guy crazy, but right. I'm really soft as, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that's what it turned into. I get it. Yeah. But I guess too, because you were probably always like very tall or. I was six feet at 12. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it probably kind of gave you the gave persona, this persona. Yeah. You know, but it's like, I'm just a teddy bear. Teddy bear. I'm just Ruben Stutter. I promise. <laughs> Not so, Ruben Stutter. No, I, I, I was skinny, skinny back then, though. <laughs> I, was, I was way skinnier. <laughs> But it was just like, yeah. I was. I've always been a lover, man. I, I ain't. I've never been that guy. Yeah. Never. Never. Yeah. I, but I. Yeah. I felt like I. I convinced myself that that's what I needed to be. Yeah. And so it kind of created the space um, for a couple years that I. Okay. I was trying to be something that I, I knew I wasn't. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. But never, never anything crazy. I never got any. 
any major trouble at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> all right. So high school is, I guess, somewhat just kind of normal until when did things, I guess, when did things start to shift? So you're you're in one church, right? Mm -hmm. How did you come to to I guess to know Larry Reed's ministry? It was my mom. Okay. It was my mom. So she visited the church. I think she visited. Like somehow she came in contact with these guys. What was the name of the church? Um, at the time it was was it the Breakthrough was it Breakthrough Temple or the Breakthrough Church? It was Breakthrough Temple. Okay. When did things take a turn? How long so, into you attending so, the church? I would say um, it was less than a year that I think the grooming started. So when did you said it took about nine months to a year for mm -hmm. them to start grooming you? So did they start within nine months to a year or was it did, when you think about it, did it start the moment you you came into the church? I think it would, uh, and, I, and just to be clear, we're talking about Reed. Larry To be Reed. clear. Correct. So when I say grooming, that's who I'm talking about. Okay. Right. Um, I would have to say it started probably earlier than that, if I, if I think about it, really. Because um, it, it would be, it would just be certain moments that would happen. And so, um, like when I was talking about this off camera, mm -hmm. one of the first moments that I remember having this was very like, like short after when I when, we, when I first came to church, he had a preaching engagement in uh, Morris Morrisville. It's right outside of Charlotte. Okay. And um, we went walking through. He had to run into Walmart or something. Walking through Walmart, and he was just talking to me, like he's asking me certain questions, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember him saying to me, he said, uh, and like I said, like I told you with my memory, like if I if a moment has an impact on me emotionally, I can recall it. Like everything about the moment. I remember the shirt on the rack behind him. Like that kind of thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we were walking through and uh, he said, uh, after I was I asked the question he asked me and he, and he said, he said, Trey, he said, if somebody wanted to manipulate you, they, they could. It would be easy to manipulate you. Right, I'm, and I, I remember, I remember, I remember looking at him like, like, what, like, what, what do you, what you mean? Why, why, why you say that? He said, I can just tell. He said, I can just tell, like, like somebody, if like somebody, that was, if they're smarter than you, they can manipulate you. I and it like, just came random. Yeah, it was super random, super random. Okay. And uh, I said, my my opinion is, in that moment, he was already like teeing up the move, like, all right, so this could be something at some point. Mm. you know possibly right and uh and you were how old at the time i was like 14 15 okay like, so when i first met him yeah. like 14 15 somewhere in there okay and uh i wasn't 16 yet i know that for sure yeah i was like 14 15 somewhere in, there, in that space when, or at, on the, when this particular scenario happened i i so i ended up getting into a sexual relationship with another lady in the church at the time another girl in the church you was just yeah, yeah, yeah. You I was still my daughter. If y'all in church, you listen. Watch the musicians, man. <laughs> I'm just all I'm saying, and I'm just saying it's just what the truth is. Like if you in the church, you know what I'm talking about. Watch, yeah. watch the musicians and watch the daughters. That's all I'm saying. But um, they uh they found out about it. It was a situation because like the culture in the church at the time was like if you. If you were in a relationship, uh -huh. or if you were interested in a relationship with somebody in the church, uh -huh. like it had to be facilitated. Like it wasn't something that I could just like. Let's say me and you, we liking each other, uh -huh. right? I couldn't just be like, "Hey, Tasha, I want to take you out," without like basically like the permission of like the leaders in the church. Like it was like that kind of dynamic. Specifically, like with Reed, like he was like really like specific about those kind of interactions. Like where he would if either he allowed it or 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 not, and he would be really intentional about, yeah, and so because we knew that, um, we kept it a secret, you know, we kept it a secret, and and plus we knew that he wouldn't, he wasn't gonna be with it. We knew that too. Why? 
This sounds very cultish. Oh, for sure. I mean, and I, like the and Mormons. I, you know how the Mormons pick the 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 daughters and the wives and who yeah. they marry and yeah, who gets to talk to God or go to God and that was like like now that I'm removed from it, like that's what I would describe it as. It was for sure cult. Like just the way that the like the operation of the whole thing was like um he was very in everybody's life. Like very in their life. <laughs> like like that's just the way the only way to put it. Like the decisions that they made to the extent of if they wanted to get another vehicle, like he would be a part of that facilitating or how they dress, like he would be a part of that. The women and the men, you know, like like saying like this is what you should look like. That kind of really involved in everybody's life. Mm. And um, I, one day I do a show. Okay. And I loved my hair. My husband loved my hair. Yeah. But he called me after I did a show, and was like, Tasha, don't you ever wear your hair like that again. Marie. Yeah. Larry Reed. I said, what? What are you talking about? Mm. And he was like, don't do that. I watched that show and that hair, it just did something to me. Mm. Don't ever wear your hair like that again. I just had to call and tell you that. I said, now in my mind, I'm like, nigga. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm wearing it now. <laughs> This is like, yes. Is that was? Yes. Oh my like, god. Like I was just like, and I thought that was very. Yeah. You just called me out the blue to tell me about a hairstyle. Tell me it's spiritually just talk to you. It's and spiritually that's, talk yeah, to it's you. Yeah, it's just it just I just had to tell you that I got this spiritual revelation. Just don't ever wear your hair like that again. Boy. Only man that can tell me don't wear my hair like that again is Shekna H. Kelly. Right. As I, Cause he paying for it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It was just weird to me because I was just like, what man does that? What people don't do unless they your girlfriends. Like, girl, I saw that hairstyle. Don't do that no more. But like, he called me and it was like, now he knows you're married, right? Yes. And he was okay. always very inappropriate mm. as far as like, you know. I remember one day he was getting a massage and. I was like, what are you doing getting a massage? Oh, I travel with my masseuse. And I was like, oh, okay. He was like, but you can massage me if you want to. This nigga, bro. Like, I said, bye. I just hung up. That's crazy. And he knows that you're married. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's crazy. So I think he did it just to kind of. No, he wanted to see. Had <laughs> you played into it, I know this dude. Had you been like, well, maybe. Had you played into it a little bit, I promise you he was going to explore it more. He was going to at least try to see, like, oh, well, is, could she? Like, he was going to try to figure it out. Had you played into it just a little bit, well, I don't even know the the, the dynamic of what y'all relationship mm -mm, was, but mm -mm. had you played like into that. it just a little yeah. bit, I promise you he was going, uh, let me see. You mm -mm. know, because, like, my opinion is he's gay. That's my opinion. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. If like people mean gay in general, right? But my problem with him is, it's like he plays both, you know. Because I've watched you tell people they're going to hell because they're gay, as a pastor. I've I've seen you do it mm. on the pulpit, but now you just advocate because it's convenient. We had a conversation, and he told me he was like, um, I, I, I have I had a. a Suck dick, I have. Has somebody sucked my dick? I have. Has somebody rolled my dick? I have. And so I just kind of was like, but you said you weren't gay when we talked. I'm not gay. I don't consider myself gay because I'm not with nobody. So that's just stuff that I did. But did I do it when I was molested? When I was molested? No. But I did that those things on my own consensually. And I was just like, okay. Whatever. It's not even my business, not my man. I don't care. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But then when I go on my platform and I say, this is a gay man, I am not gay. So I took the video mm -hmm. and I don't know if he was on edibles, but he loved edibles now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. 
he um and I don't know if he he remembered, but he was like, "Have I sucked dick? I have. Have that? Have I? Has a dick sucked me? I have. Have I rolled dick? I have." He said he rolled. Yeah, that was all in the video. And so, he would describe um, being sexual with a man like like you you can do that and not be gay. Like that was just a thing. Like he was like, "I can, I can sleep with a man. I can let a man suck my dick, and I, I'm not I not be gay." I was just like, no, you're gay as hell. And he was telling bro. you this? Yeah. At what age? Uh, this was just doing the whole, like, just the me whole being process. around. Yeah, 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 me being around him. Like, he was just, he wasn't, he was saying it, from, not, just, not just me. Yeah. Like, he was just saying it in conversation. It was just what his opinion was. Like, I could sleep with men and, or I do sexual things with men and, and I not be gay. You know, that, that always stuck out to me. I'm like, yo, that's gay. Like, if you, if you want to see what, if you have a desire to be with a man sexually, that's gay, you know. So I have I I can I can respect that, but it's just not how I choose to live my life, you know. Like um, I think it's just easier, you know, <clears throat> in terms of if I see someone having this conversation with someone. To me, it's kind of like, especially if it's another man, mm-hmm. it's like planting a seed that it's okay to do this. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't make you gay. So it's kind of like subconsciously planting a seed that if I never considered that. Tasha. Yeah. It's like it's, it's, I never considered that. Yeah. It could be borderline grooming. Cause yeah, you're right. I, I didn't, I've never until this moment. When I you go to question, that. if he makes a move on you, mm-hmm. you don't say, Oh, this is a man making a move on me. You just say mm-hmm. that this is just a sexual act. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter if it's male or female. It's a sexual act. Don't consider this gay. It doesn't make you gay. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure he was married at the time. Yeah. To a woman. <laughs> to a woman, yeah. Yeah. So if I'm telling a, a young boy that, mm. I'm planting the seed that it's okay, man. Like, it's you okay, know, yeah. if a man tries you, that don't make you gay. Tries you very... That's, that's so right. <laughs> I, I, I literally never... I never saw it as like a part of grooming, the grooming, mm. but it absolutely was. But the sexual yeah. act in itself is perversion. Mm. All right. Um, so besides the 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 comment that he made about, you know, being with a man sexually doesn't make you gay. Mm. What, describe some of the other things that he would say or that not he would do, but that he would say to you that kind of just made you go. Oh, OK. Things you would say, not do. Yeah. Things you would say. Um, I think um, I always had an eyebrow up about the company he kept that would like that would be from his past. So there'll be these guys, like guys, he was like, Oh yeah, this is my best friend. I've been knowing for you know all this time. And they would come around. And they would be really feminine guys. And that always stuck out to me. Like, and then like um, like in, in, anytime we would meet new people, immediately he would be, oh yeah, he's gay. And he would start saying like, and I, after a while, it started, it, it, for me it became like, yo, why is like everybody gay? Like, why, why do you feel mm-hmm. like everybody's gay? And and why is that the first thought? Like you, like it's like immediately you go into their sexuality. Like when he, he would meet people, and um, like in the because he um, does gospel music, and so you know we had these musicals and you know performances and stuff, and he would go into that like, oh yeah, he's gay, he's gay, you know this person's gay, he's gay. But let's let's go let's go because I know I you know I don't want to. Are you comfortable with going into? The acts. Oh, that's why we here. Like, um, I've I've done the work, I've done the work, and I think that's a really important piece to to discuss um, for several reasons. Okay. Uh, one of them um, is this narrative that he's trying to create about me being so angry okay. with with like my whole reason for this. You know, even this, even me doing this interview, he yeah. feel, he feels like it's because I'm angry with him. And he de- he described this in his paperwork that he submitted. He said, my reason, I think the way he described it was smear campaign. That's the verb he used. He said, it's, it's because I'm angry that he cut me out of his life. And I was, I'm so angry about that. 
that I'm just saying all these terrible things because I'm just so upset that he cut me out of his life. Like, bro, you are you're just that insane, makes bro. No it's sense. like you are insane. Sense. He said, "This I'm doing all this because I'm upset that he cut me out of his life." That are you crazy? Makes no <laughs> that's sense. just like Tasha. When I tell you, I was upset at one point. I'll say, I'll say this: I, I was upset that what happened happened. I, that was right. going to be my question. I was upset Are about that. Are you well within your right to be upset? No, for sure. I, so, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. I'm going to tell you why. I was upset because for for years, I wasn't able to acknowledge it for what it was. You hit I, it. I thought it was something different. And not even not even hiding it. I, I, it was like the, the acts themselves, because of how they presented themselves to me by him. I didn't acknowledge it for being what it was. I didn't acknowledge it for being as terrible as, as it was. What do you mean? I think a large part of uh, of why I felt angry is, is, is coming into the understanding of what happened. So I was like, all this time, I, I've been blind to this, right? And so, because, and 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 people could they could probably wonder like how do you how are you blind to sexual things? Like how 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 are you able to see it different from what it is? Is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And I I could rush I would rationalize in the same way to an extent if I was hearing it objectively. Wow. But um, I think what you have to consider is where it happened, how it happened, when it happened, where it happened was in a church space. It's a religious space. Um, why it happened is because of the absence of my dad. Where it happened is that it's, it's, it happened in a father side, father son dynamic. That's uh. where it happened, right? The dynamic wasn't a you're my lover. That wasn't the dynamic at all. The dynamic was I'm your father. And this is actually my way of protecting you. So this was what, what was com- what was communicated to me was this is what I'm being led to do by God's like I made it give it like the spiritual basis that this is my way of covering you spiritually. And so um, what the what the way it began was. A conversation. He said, "Yo, I'm gonna. I need to talk to you, you know." And he said, um, "My feeling is, you're either gonna be gay, or you're going to be a male that manipulates women." So he said, "It's a womanizer. Either you're gonna be gay, or you're gonna be a womanizer." And at the time, like in my mind, gay. I'm thinking, like, I'm not gonna be gay. What are you talking about? Womanizer, that's possible. Now you're still you're a teenager. Yeah, I'm young. One day. Yeah, I'm okay. still, yeah, I'm still a teenager. Okay. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna be gay. Womanizer is possible. Like my dad was a womanizer. I have a reference for that. In my mind, gay, I'm not gonna be gay. But because of who was t- who said it, right? So like Reed became a large part of my life. So. He was, he was, he was literally like a dad. Like, um, at one point I drove his car to school, you know what I'm saying? Like regularly, like I, I, it was my transportation to school. Um, he taught me a lot about, um, how I should dress, um, daily stuff. Like I'm, I remember um, he would sit me down and, um, show me how to uh, keep my receipt book. Like and when I'm, when I'm keeping a receipt book, uh, for, for your bank and this, those kind of things, you know, um, are talking to me about spiritual things, you know, um, and it kind of it created this, like I said, a father son dynamic. Like there were even times where he would have to preach, and he would want me to drive him. It would just be me and him, and he has a, some type of preaching engagement, and I would drive him to the engagement, like 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 I'm his assistant kind of thing. I'm holding his bags, and you know, that kind of thing in church world. So it became that. It was more. It was a very father son dynamic in my mind, right, and. The, the vulnerability of that is what made those moments 
um, confusing because, like I said, all of it came from a spiritual basis. He was like, yo, this is what I feel like I need to do to protect you because he was like, it's going to happen anyway. <laughs> he said, either you're going to be gay or you go be a womanizer. So this is my way of sheltering that and kind of like helping you along to make sure you end in the right spot. Um, I remember him telling me that he, he wanted to do these tests on me. And he said, um, he said, I wanted to, I wanted to do these tests. Cause he was saying like, um, he said he had some tests. Actually, cause he asked me, he said that I think I was gay. That I, he asked me if I thought I was gay. And I said, no, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think I'm gay. And then he was like, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And he kept probing, right? And, and like, and like the way that he was probing was like, like, should I be considering if I'm gay? You know, I'm, I'm thinking that to myself, like the way yeah. the, the line, the way the questions was going. Yeah. Like, should I, should I be thinking? Like, I was considering yeah. that more. Like, what, yeah. you, what you getting at? You know. And um, so he was like, well, I have some tests I can do that that would help you determine if you're gay. And because at the, by the t end of the, the questioning, I'm like. Yo, am I gay? Like, no, nah, I don't know. <laughs> like, no, nah, I don't know. I'm trying to like, am, am I gay? Like, yeah, I might be. <laughs> like, I'm trying to figure it out, right? Because yeah. like how he's questioning me. And um, so he said, I got some some tests I can do. I'm like, well, shit, I need to know because I, I don't I don't think I'm gay. But if you think I I might be, let's figure it out. So, okay. you know, let's get through it. it was like, because I like my mind, I was so impressionable at the time. So I mean, this is part of why I was so I was angry at the time. I was like, yo. Why didn't you know? Why yeah. didn't you know? So I had to go through that whole process too, you know, okay. of like of like even forgiving myself. Yeah. Because like the version of who I am today, that could never happen. What was the test? Okay, so it took him like a week to do it, a week or two. It took him a week a little, it took him a little bit to so do it. So he let you fester on it. Yeah, and I'm like, and I'm Can I'm we not, get to this? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. like, bruh. And I, I would say it in front of people, like I would, like in a way that he would know what I'm talking about. Like, what are we gonna do these tests, man? I need to know. Like, what, what you talking about? Like, when we gonna do them? Like, I'm not knowing I mean, what you're talking about. I mean, it's funny now, but as a child, I'll be, I, I would not be laughing <laughs> yeah, if you're a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, uh, thinking back, it's comical now, for sure. It's definitely got some, some humor to it. But yeah. um, I was dead serious. Like, man, like, I need to know. You know what I'm saying? And so um, he was like, all right. Finally, he called. So um, he called me to his room. Now, were you living with him? Yeah, I was okay. living with him at the time. Okay. Yep, I was living with him at the time. Because it was a few times where I moved in, moved out, moved in, moved out. It was like a couple times that happened. But um, this was one of the, one of the spaces. Before I was you in. get into the test, uh -huh. what made you move in with him? So what was that? How did that even transpire? So okay, so initially, the I moved in with him because the the young lady that I ended up having the sexual relationship with, we were in the same house, and so. They wanted me to move with him, so me and her went in the same house together. So they found out about you guys. Yeah, yeah. But why weren't you staying with your mom? Mom, so my mom at the time she she lived not far, but it was like a situation like when she came when she came to the church, she was really intent about me having positive male role models. Okay. At the time, she's really pot really um, intentful about making sure like okay. And they basically told her, like, we got him. Like, well, we'll make sure he's good. And she was so okay. So you just with ended it. up just staying over there and I then it just up, turned yep. into. And okay. moving, I mean, ended up living there. So know. let's talk about the, this test, these tests that uh, he wanted to run on you to see if you were gay yeah. or going to be a womanizer. Yeah, yeah. So, so what would it describe the test? Okay. So he had me come in his room and. Uh, he had a, a blanket. Uh, he was wrapping a blanket. It was a, a zebra print blanket, blanket, black and white zebra print. Oh, zebra print. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He ended up wrapping the blanket, which he actually years later ended up giving to me. He gave me the blanket years later because he said it was the blanket. It was the blanket that he prayed in, and he was like, "Yeah." But he was wrapped up naked in it. He was wrapped up naked in the blanket. I just like when I was preparing for this. Jesus. When I was preparing for this, I remembered that I forgot. Okay. <laughs> I forget, when I was preparing for this, I yeah. said, "Yo, 
He gave me that blanket. This is the same blanket. He gave me the blanket. That's, that's a whole other something. But yeah. Um, so yeah, he told me to come in his room, and he had a wife beater on. I remember like seeing the wife beater, but he had the blanket wrapped around him, and he told me to take off all of my clothes. And uh, it's okay. I'm just it's still. I'm just. I'm blindly listening because I just trust him this much. I trust him that much. I'm just like whatever he's saying. Like I, I'm just go with it. So he told me to take off all of my clothes, and um, he t- he told me to sit on beside him. I mean, so we sitting. He was sitting in the, style, in the Indian style, and he pulled his computer. I was an old uh, Mac Mac computer. Okay. And he put porn on. He put on gay porn. And he told me to watch it. And immediately when he put the when I saw what it was, I remember like physically feeling sick. I almost threw up. And I looked down. I was like, Yo, I, I can't even. I can't even look at that. Like, I, like, like I remember him laughing. Like he laughed. He was like, "Well, he's crazy." That like, I, I was like, it was physically making me sick. I'm, like, I can't look at that. I, just, right. I can't. And look you at were that. sitting there butt naked. I was sitting there naked. I was sitting there beside naked. him, and beside he wrapped him. and y'all were on the floor. I was sitting on the floor. He had a black um, futon, and he was sitting right in front of the futon on the floor, and we both are like our back up against the futon, and he pulled out this uh, computer, and put this uh, gay porn on, and. What he was trying to do is to see if my body would respond to seeing two men together. It transitioned. It transitioned. That moment transitioned. Um, like I said, it went from me just doing the, the spinning thing where he would, he would jack off to now he's physically touching me. And so... Um, so he would touch you while he was jacking yeah. his dick? Yeah. Like feel on you? Yeah. Yeah. Like your... Yeah, my butt... My he would he would start touching on my penis and like yeah yeah it transitioned into that into that then it transitioned more the the address on the police report like the thirty two sixteen mm-hmm. Olusty mm-hmm. um, I think a lot of people have, have kind of concluded that that's the only place it happened it isn't it's not the only place it happened at. Uh, he lived at a uh, a house and what I'm about to describe now is where this happened at. It's called Grace Park. I don't know if it's the same name now, but it's called Grace, it was at the time, it was Grace Park in uh, Morrisville. And uh, so he told me to lay on the bed this time. I was on the floor. Every other time I was on the floor. So he wanted me to lay on the bed. So I'm, I'm laying across the bed and he's doing this massage. Lights off, right? He's doing this massage and in the middle of the massage, he starts sucking my dick in the middle of the massage. And I said, I remember, I remember like I jumped back, like, oh, like, what are you doing? Moving up. Yeah. I jumped back. And um, he was like, oh, like, same scenario. He minimized the moment. Because for me, I'm like, is this violation? Like, what, like, what, like, what? I mean, you never did this? Like, what, what you doing? And because of who he was to me, I was able to bring my mind to a point and I'm like, okay, this is Reed. It's okay. This is Reed. It's okay. That, that's less, let's calm down. You know what I'm saying? And that was the first time that happened. It was, he, we were, he was supposed to be at church and he gave me oral sex. Um, laying on his bed and like I said he he gave it like this spiritual thing like he, he made it a spiritual thing he made it a, they gave it a spiritual thing like I'm oh, sorry like you you're because he like he didn't he was he, like he was like he was he was tired uh for some reason he didn't want to be at the church and so what the interaction that he and I was having it's like I'm doing the prophet a service because, you know, he didn't he didn't want to be at church or for whatever reason. And me being with him that night was helping him. A couple of years you know, back, so like I he, had he a bad like reaction to some cheap. To, to like minimize it. So I'm like, yeah, like, OK, I'm doing him a favor. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm able to, like, be a value to him. Like, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm protecting him. Like, it was like it was that kind of thing. Right. And um, 
Yeah. So that was the first time it happened. And then from there, it was just uh, anytime he was feeling away, that's what he would initiate. Now, did he, yeah. did you eventually climax during those? No, that happened. Yeah, I did. In, in, in his mouth? I think I did one time in his mouth. A couple of years back, I had a bad reaction to some cheap hair dye, and it unfortunately put me in the hospital. My friends had asked me to seek legal action, but I didn't, okay? And I kind of wish that I knew of companies like Morgan & Morgan. When you're injured, you deserve compensation. And the size of the law firm matters. Morgan & Morgan is one of America's largest personal injury firms with over 800 lawyers and over 100 offices nationwide. And the best part is Morgan & Morgan is completely free, unless they win your case, of course. Over 3 million people currently trust Morgan & Morgan and getting started is super easy. Just check out the links in the comment section for more information now. All right. As I said before, this was 45 minutes of a two and a half hour interview of nothing but test after test after test. We also got more footage of the mother, his mother, his mother, explaining her perception and her shortcomings about it. And then last but not least, oh Lord, the receipt. Mm, mm, mm. The receipts of Larry Reed Live apologizing till he was blue in the face would come on the face to 15-year-old Levantre Adams. This is a series, guys, PPP. If you guys want to go and watch all of that, we did just enough that was approved for YouTube without this being striked as inappropriate content. And so, because the stuff was heavy. The things that went on in this church that still goes on with the same people he surrounds himself with is all in the interview. That's why everybody's been going live saying Levantre uh, Andrews, I keep saying Adams, Levantre Andrews is too detailed. He's, too, he's very vividly detailed about everything because when you are a child, you remember, like, I remember when I was five and my uh, 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 toucher, um, he was uh, 19 going on 20, but he had a lot of acne all over his body and he wore medical scrubs all the time because he worked as a janitor in a hospital and he played video games and I remember he used to have his vinegar smell to him and he would ask me to come in his room and I would sit down in the room on the floor and his room was disgusting because all he did was play video games all day now I'm five years old at the time and no one questioned while I was going in his room at five years old at night it was right across from my auntie room um and so it was just kind of like okay Tasha's in there you know, with Alan, he's playing video games. But what they didn't know was that Alan would take down his scrubs after he had been cleaning toilets and, and patients' rooms up all day, and he would ask me to play with his stuff that had uh, 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 acne all over the legs, all over him, and then he asked me to give him in the room. And then... He would take down my pants and have me squat down and he would go from the back and lick me. And I remember the room. I remember the vivid details. And let me tell you something, what I did with the, this whole two hour interview. I spent an hour, an hour, almost an hour and a half talking to Levantre uh, Andrews about things that are familiar to him. It's sort of like what they do on polygraph tests, right? So you ask them about their childhood, about things that you know that are true about them. Is he married? What's his mom's name? What, what school did he go to? So you get you start to get a, a sense of how they answer and how comfortable they are before we even moved into the graphic details of what he alleges went on between uh, Dr. Larry Reed and him at the time at 15 years old. And it was the same pace, beat by beat, 
beat by beat. He didn't tense up. He didn't do it. He's able to kind of laugh about a lot of the things now because he's done 10 years of therapy. So, um, and in these, these, these receipts that I have with Dr. Larry Reed live. Okay. Um, the receipts that he, he tried to give. Oh, Larry, I, I got to tell you, man, you, you, this is why I believe uh, God is a woman because like just watching you, how you maneuvered out here, because I called you um, after I had done this interview, I called Dr. Larry Reed live and I said to him, I said, listen, I'm thinking about taking the interview. This is when I was thinking about putting it out. Right. And I said, and I want to know, are there any receipts that show you apologizing to this man he said no the absolutely not i have the recorded call it's on tashaklive.com and i said are you sure he said absolutely sure i said you sure absolutely sure i said so if i decide to take this story you're saying that the receipts that i have you did not write even though i know that you wrote them absolutely and if you touch this story you're going to be held accountable he says dr larry Reed. I said, oh yeah Oh, okay. So you're telling me that you don't want to come on the platform and address it, and you're denying with everything in you there's no receipts that exist. He said, absolutely. So now I said, now watch him go look. And he went and he tore up every DM, every text message, every phone, and he found the receipts that I said, and he found them, and he gave them to his boyfriend with the wig. But he gave his boyfriend one screenshot of the conversation and acknowledge, let me tell you how great I am. I'll tell you how I know God is a woman. He acknowledged when he gave his boyfriend that this was a conversation he had with Levantre Andrews minus his response. Meaning Levantre Andrews confronted him, but he deleted all of his responses, even though I had it already recorded and you're going to see that in episode three of us opening up the DM and going through it and gave the boyfriend a response that showed he responded like a month later, but skipped out on all the apologies and call me and scriptures and videos of him trying to give Levantre in order to keep brainwashing him. I told you y'all not playing with me tonight. And I said, all I needed you to do was validate the receipts, and you did that, and I have the video downloaded in case. He tries to go and tell them to delete the video. So you said you didn't apologize, but then you gave the conversation that I have in full detail to your boyfriend who you buy cars for, computers for, and who you pay to bully creators who pick up this story and acknowledge that this conversation was yours between you and him. God was a woman. And I watched you. I have the timeline. And in episode maybe three, maybe four, we'll depend on how we want to swing it. We're going to put out the timeline with the receipts with Dr. Larry Reed live acknowledging that the motherfucking conversation is his. You apologizing to your blue in the face. This is why I have on blue tonight. Because we apologizing on your behalf to Levantre Andrews till we blue in the face. Are you red because of the Rosea or the possible low T cell account? T cell count. Because you know it has a look when your T cell account is low. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So to y those of y'all that want to continue to support and love on Dr. Larry, love on him, love on him. Go send him all the prayer and love that he needs. And I pray to God that you do it with your son in the next room. Now, with that being said, we are about to head over to our after show to discuss Jaguar Wright and what has tragically happened to her over the weekend. We have exclusi exclusively spoke to her family that has been watching this go down. And we told y'all when we did our Surviving Jaguar Rice series that there was something deeply wrong and her family came on camera to, to put out exclusively that she is a diagnosed schizophrenic 
as her father was. And I'm seeing over and over and over again the exploitation of a mentally ill woman. Who is, con- y'all are just continuing to put a camera in her face for views. But the moment she has a breakdown, you want to laugh. You think it's funny. It's not funny. Because at the end of the day, Jaguar Wright is still a woman. She's still a black woman. And mental health in the black community, I'm almost sometimes disgusted at what I see, like, amongst us. Like, I just, I can't. I can't. I can't. So, we're going to head over to our um, uh, TashaKLive.com. And like I said, if you want to see the full two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour uh, interview, plus other episodes as well as victims and his mother and other family members that are speaking on behalf of Levantre, 15 year old Levantre Andrews, because this is his, his moment, his time to put everything on the table without being bullied. Um, you had to meet a bully with a bully. Okay. Um, it is available now. Also the Yaki awakened, uh, interview is now available on Tasha K live.com. And like I said, we will be doing our after show on Jaguar, right? And we will discuss what the family has said on Tasha K live.com. And we will be talking about our day one of our detox, our 15 day detox of us cleansing ourselves and purifying ourselves and resetting our mind, body and spirit. Okay. And without further ado, I love you. I love you guys. Guys, if you do want to sign up and come and catch the after show as well as the other content, please go to the website first, TashaKLive.com. You create your account there. Then you download the app, okay? And then you can stream it wherever you want on Roku, AirPlay it, or whatever, okay? And so I love you. Thank you for listening to Levantre Andrews, whether you agree with him or not. But I just ask that the next time you have someone who is in a spiritual position preaching to you, I ask that you think not with your heart, not with your mind. I ask you to think with your pockets because when you think with your pockets, you're a lot smarter and you discern a lot better. Now I got to go.